I have made no secret of my fate while talking about issues such as racism on this channel. I'm going to read out part of the catechism, namely a number 1935. Yes, we have a lot of stuff in, in our catechism. The equality of man, men race essentially on their dignity as persons and the rights that flow from it. Every form of social or cultural discrimination in fundamental personal rights on the grounds of sex, race, colour, social conditions, language or religion must be curbed and eradicated as compatible with God's design. Now that's not to say that every Catholic who's ever lived has lived up to these rules. We're human and we're influenced by societies and conditions around us. And you'll find plenty of examples of groups of Catholics engaging in stuff like trying to stamp out tribal culture or stop teaching people languages, as with the wonderful Canadian residential schools, for example, or other examples like that. These are failures of what we sh of our own, and failures of the church. It's not an arguable point. A men's race should not be used to distinguish between them or mock or insult them. With that in mind, I'm going to talk about a few Catholic saints and figures of importance within the Christian tradition who were black. Firstly, let me talk about the venerable Pierre Toussaint with the caveat that my French accent is awful and I can imagine if any French people hear me doing this presentation, they may wish to kill me for the honour of France at some point, considering how badly I'll mispronounce a word or two. But that's less important than me making the point. Venerable Pierre Toussaint, 1766 to 1853, was born a slave in Haiti. It was called Saint Dominique, in fact, when he was born. But that's just a piece of trivia. And died a free man in New York City. He is credited by many with being the father of Catholic charities in New York. Think about that. A black man is the father of all the underlying charities in New York. The man who started it rolling. Pierre was instrumental in raising funds for the first Catholic orphanage and began the city's first school for black children. He also helped provide funds for the Oblate Sisters of Providence, a religious community of black nuns founded in Baltimore, and played a vital role in providing resources to erect Old St. Patrick's Cathedral. And you can think about that too. What's, I'm sure Old St. Patrick, or St. Patrick, the first image that's going to come to mind isn't black people, it's going to be Irish people. During a yellow fever epidemic, when many of the city's political leaders fled the city in search of healthier rural climates, Pierre Toussaint cared for the sick and dying. He was a successful entrepreneur who did not hesitate to share his, the fruits of his labour with others. In recognition of Pierre Toussaint's virtuous life, the late Cardinal Cook introduced Pierre's cause for canonization at the Vatican in 1968. In December 1988, the late Cardinal O'Connor had the remains of Pierre Toussaint transferred from Lower Manhattan to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Midtown Manhattan, where he is buried as the lone, only lay person in the crypt, along the far, former Cardinal Archbishops of New York City. On December the 17th, 1997, Pope John Paul II declared uh, Pietis on Venerable, thus placing him firmly on the road to becoming North America's first black saint. I should point out that it is exceptionally unusual for a member of the laity to be buried with archbishops in the crypts of a cathedral. This is very, very uncommon. This, these areas of a church or a cathedral are normally reserved only for the clergy in death. There is a small video on this page as well about Pierre Toussaint, which may be of interest to people. For my next figure, I'm going to talk about St. Moses the Black. St. Moses the Black is a saint in Catholicism. But in Western Catholicism, he's one of the lesser-known saints, whereas among the Coptic Orthodox and in the, some of the Eastern churches, he has far more prominence. I'm going to read a little bit of the Akathist, which is a hymn to him out. Akathist to our Holy Father among the saints, Moses the Black, Kentuckian one. Mighty ancient dweller of the Egyptian Tibiad, thy life is an everlasting memorial of the reconciliation we got between God and men. In thee we see the fullness of the fruits of repentance. Guide our steps onto the path of salvation, as we call on thy all-powerful prayer. Rejoice, holy elder Moses, righteous teacher of true spiritual wisdom. Ecos one, in the days of thy youth as a gang leader, thou was a ravenous wolf slaying sheep and murdering men. Yet in a moment of truth, God acted invisibly on thy conscience as thou was about to commit a crime. Moses the Black is one of the most interesting figures in the early church. He started out as a robber and a man of extreme violence. 
he died sacrificing his life to robbers so that others could flee. He originally took shelter as a robber in an ab- in a monastery and had to beg to be admitted of it, and spent the rest of his life there before he became the abbot himself. One of the more famous stories about him is that when his fellow monks had gathered together to judge some, someone for a, a crime against the community, Moses was found to be absent. He eventually entered the hall carrying, it this depends on the story, either a, a basket with straw running out or water running out. When they asked him why, he went, um, my sins run out before me, behind me. Uh, how, who am I to judge this man? That's kind of typical of the stories and sayings associated with him. The site I'm looking at here is a, a site where it's designed for black Christians in America who also want to practice Christianity in, in a form similar to the ancient Orthodox. That's two figures for today. We'll be getting some more tomorrow. And people might begin to see why I find the the desire to knock black people down and regard them as less than God's creations so offensive. <laughs>